Welcome back everybody to the uh, world's worst fishing. I'm Chris Jones and uh, man feels good to have gotten a haircut. So my hair got so long uh, during quarantine, yeah, well it's still during quarantine, but I decided to rebel against it and uh, salons and um, barbershops in Florida were just allowed to open up this week. So I basically rebelled and said cut it all off and wound up dang near with a military cut. Um, so I didn't quite mean for it to be this short, but uh, man, it feels great. Just feel like a new man. But uh, for today's video, um, one, of, one of my good buddies in the bait making world, Austin Hall, uh, he runs a, a bait company called Middle River Baits. Um, definitely check him out. He's doing some really cool stuff, um, not only with injection, but uh, he, he, so what he, uh, what he really loves doing, and you can tell if you go check out his work, he likes pouring big swim baits and then breaking out the, the airbrush and, uh, and really brushing some cool patterns, um, almost like you would do with a wooden bait or uh, any sort of hard bait. So definitely check him out. I'm gonna be attempting to color match some of his injection stuff today. So like week before last or something like that, <clears throat> he posted up some bomb colors in the Angling AI Stinger Mold and in the Angling AI Ecto Crawl. Now, I personally do not have the Ecto Crawl mold. I should have it, but I don't. Um, so I'm going to be using uh, the Stinger mold and the new AI Punch Bug mold, Punch Crawl mold. I'm gonna be using my old Bass Tackle 709 crawl, and uh, I'm gonna be trying to color match two colors. So we're gonna go ahead and jump on in. All right, so we have quite a few things uh, spread out here on display, so this is kinda what we're going to be using in today's video, I have over here on the left, the Angling AI Punch Crawl Mold. Um, this is the one that we kind of launched with Terry Scroggins back in November, I think it was. This is the 709 Crawl, which is uh, available over at BTS Molds, which is Bob's Tackle Shack. Um, this used to be a Bass Tackle Mold, but now it's over there. Uh, and then this is the Angling AI Stinger Mold. I call it the Grass Grenade. So, uh, and then um, just my Bass Tackle Twin Injector with blending block and uh, all of these molds they they just they inject super well and uh, no complaints um, we have our dead-on plastic black bucket swim bait jerk bait blends here and you'll see some colors laid out some really bright colors right some pink and chartreuses in the back because here's what we're trying to do so here's a screenshot I took and you'll see eh, middle river baits and look at this madness here I've kind of done some of these color patterns before, but never this good. So as soon as I saw that, I said, I gotta up my game on my, uh, on, on my pink and pumpkin. So this is essentially a green pumpkin and a pink laminate. Now that's the Ecto Crawl, but there's the Stinger. And then the other color is that right there. So this is a green pumpkin in a very bright kind of lime truce sort of very, very, very green chartreuse color. So we're gonna start with the pink first. I'm gonna go ahead and get my four cups of plastic cooked up. I'm gonna get my molds clamped, and then we'll try to build the first color and see how we do. And real quick, just wanna show you some cool uh, bluegill swim baits, or sort of like a, an orange red belly bluegill um, that I poured the other day. So these have um, quite a few different things going on. They are capsuled, skin poured, hand brushed obviously that gold foil is is hand laid in there um so a little bit of every technique in, into these and uh, i'm super happy with them so um let me know in the comments below if you guys might want to see a video on something like this where kind of every little technique that i know uh, is sort of thrown in there to get cool cool effects um super happy with these and uh if y'all want to see a video on it i would love to um kind of show you guys exactly how I was able to do something like this. And uh, yeah, really happy with those. Okay, so for the pink side, I'm gonna try to get away with just this straight Neo pink without having to like mix a different pink in it or anything like that. Let's see, where's the front? Yeah, there it is. So that's the, oh, drop some wax in it by accident, oops. Alrighty. So, and I mean, we're really gonna get it pink. 
These dead on colors are very, very concentrated. So that should, oh yeah. And I think he was actually adding some black flake to both sides. So the watermelon side and the pink side. So you don't want to make it so thick that you can't see flake, but it needs to be thick enough that it has enough contrast to where you get a good laminate effect. So that isn't bad. I just kind of look at it over there. All right, so for the watermelon side, or excuse me, more or less the green pumpkin side, I'm gonna be using Green Pumpkin 109, okay? So we're gonna use some of that from Lureworks. But looking at Austin's photo, it's pretty dark. It's a real dark watermelon, or dark pumpkin. So I'm gonna use, I'm gonna also add some of this, MF Dark Watermelon, my perhaps favorite of them all. And just see if we can get a really nice dark shade of green pumpkin that, uh, that, that I like. Yeah, so you can kind of already see the two kind of shades, right? If you look on the outside, it's a lot lighter than the inside. So that's the two different colorants there. Once I mix them in, it'll uh, look a little more uniform. Yeah. Boy, that's looking really good. Super good. I might add a little bit more of the MF. All right. Now, um, contrasting with the dead on colors, the MF colors are very, very plasticizer rich. So um, they are, quote, watered down. So you just have to keep that in mind. Which I like that. I, so I, I like this because I know there's a very little chance I'm going to add too much and then it's too thick. Um, you know, the downside being you have to add a ton of it. So we're actually going to try that. Um, we're going to add some black flake to them first, though. Let's see. And, and not like a ton of black flake. So I'm going to be using square cut um, black flake today. All right. So I'm going to add about a full quarter teaspoon to the watermelon side and then maybe a little less than that to the pink because it'll show up better on the pink because of the contrast between the black and the pink. Okay, let's just see where that gets us. Yeah, real, yeah, real sporadic there, not a ton of flake on that pink side, but I want a little more on the uh, green pumpkin side. So let's see what we get there. Looks like I'm gonna need more just by virtue that it's a dark color. So dark color flake isn't gonna show up as, as good. So we're gonna add almost a whole nother scoop. Okay, and just real quick, just this one mold here and, uh, and we'll see how it does. So, all right, so first thing that I can notice if I look at, let me get that all out there. So if I look at the top there, you can kind of see, see how the pink doesn't really show up too well. It, I'm, I'm thinking the pink isn't thick enough, but we'll find out here in just a minute. All right, let's do a little drum roll and keep our fingers crossed. Let's see how we did. Okay. Definitely want my watermelon a little bit darker. It's not bad. So you can definitely see that the pink is too dark. So it's, it's not bright enough when I put it with that uh, watermelon there. So if we look at his, Hopefully that's coming through. That pink is just a lot more brilliant, okay? Like a lot more brilliant. So I think I need to obviously thicken it up, maybe brighten it up. So I'll see what other pinks I have. The watermelon isn't bad, but his is a little bit, it's still a darker shade. It's, mine's a little too light brown. So we're gonna troubleshoot a little bit and then come back 
and see if we can get it a little closer. All right, so I decided to stay with the same pink and just add a lot more, okay? And that should thicken that up to the point to where that darker watermelon side doesn't have quite such an adverse effect on it. And hopefully it, sh it will remain thick and bright pink. And for the uh, watermelon slash green pumpkin side, I'm just gonna add more of the MF because it will darken it up without making it too opaque. So because this is such a light color, or a, a, um, a, a watered down color, I can add a lot of it and, and it will change the color, but it still remains rather see-through. So that's what I really like about that stuff. All right. So it's like, it's, it's, it's tricky, you know, I have to darken the watermelon to make that part look right without it darkening the, the pink again, like in the first run. <laughs> so, yeah, definitely some, some tricky stuff. Okay, let's see how round two went. Ooh, much better. Definitely got the pink right, okay. Yeah. It's a lot closer to it, you guys. Still think maybe the watermelon, uh, the, the pumpkin, whatever this is, watermelon, pumpkin, could actually be a little thicker because I'm not really seeing the distinction in the tail. So if I look at his again, if you look at the tails, you really see a lot of that watermelon there. See that like there in the claw? My, my tails just look a weird shade of pink. So definitely have a little bit to go there. But uh, hey, one step closer. So, yep, we're gonna try for round three and see if three times the charm. Okay, so round three was closer. We've gotten, I think, better um, lamination as far as the contrast of the two colors with better blending, but my Green pumpkin watermelon is actually a little too brown now. Um, looking at Middle River's picture, it's it's more of a green green pumpkin than I thought. Um, so I'm probably going to add just some of that just to green it up. Um, see, I don't know what his recipe is. I'm I'm gonna ask him what it is after I make this video, just to see how far off I really was. But I'm gonna troubleshoot it till I think I've got it right. And uh, yeah, yeah, definitely a tough one, but and that right there is like super duper duper cool. Um, but I want to see if I can get it as close as possible. Okay, so round four is definitely the best one yet. You can actually see a little bit of green in that green pumpkin. Yeah, you see a nice little shade of brown green there. And uh, showing you the Instagram picture on my phone through this camera you probably can't pick up on that very much um but uh yeah i'm actually really happy with that um i don't know exactly which pigment or pigments he's using but uh it looks a lot like this to me this is actually maybe a little too green um so hard to say but i think i'm happy with that and we're gonna go with it because i want to see what it looks like in some other baits um super idea that he had and you know, that right there is what I would, I, you know, to, to me, that's like a 95% match. Okay, here we go. So we're going to do one more grass grenade since we've already seen a lot of those. A punch crawl, then the 709 crawls. All right. So let's see what we can do here. Okay. Mold number one. Looking good, feeling good. Here's the punch bug. Funny enough, I used to call this mold my punch bug. So, two punch bugs today. Two different punch bugs. And way over here. Might take me a second to... Come on. There we go. Alright. Come on, I'm like stretching over here to get that one. Okay, hopefully those all did well. Fingers crossed. Okie doke. All right, so here are the uh, grass grenades from that last run. Okay. 
looking good. So we're going to throw those in the bath, get those uh, set up real quick. And now for the punch bugs. Yeah, let's check that out. Looks like they laminated super well. Yeah, look at that, you guys. That is spectacular. All right, let's peel them out and look at both sides. Wow, isn't that lovely? Love the way that they, uh, see we can get like a little half and half shot. Well, it doesn't look like it wants to do it for me, but yeah. Super awesome. Yeah, I'm really happy with those. Yeah, just look at how they blend in the claws. Is that not cool? All right, and uh, let's see. Let's take a look at the uh, ah, 709s real fast. Because we got to get started on that other color. Oh, yeah. Look at, uh, look at the way that those did. Yeah, what do you think? What do you think, Austin? Did I do okay? Probably could have actually gotten away with a little more black flake. Probably should have had a little more of that. So we'll uh, run these next two real fast. Come on. Alrighty. There we go. Beautiful. Okay, so the next color is gonna be tricky because you're laminating two greens. So if you look here, it looks to be about the same watermelon or green pumpkin, but because you're laminating it with such a bright green, it's going to turn your watermelon side even more green. So I'm thinking for the watermelon side or the green pumpkin side, I'm just gonna stick with my MF dark watermelon because it has such a brown tint to it. And I'm thinking that the brighter green side will kind of turn this green so to speak it will green it up um, once they are together so I don't want to it at least to start I don't want to make this side super green because I feel like the super green side is going to make the other side greener if that makes any sense so you can see that has a nice dark brown tint to it and that's what I think we want all right so we're going to add some neo lime Okay, and these are smaller cups here. These are the two cup size, or excuse me, yeah, these are the only the, only the one cup size. And then we're just gonna add some chartreuse lime. So again, this isn't like a pure chartreuse color that he was using, um, just a, a really, really super bright green, but not necessarily a chartreuse. So yeah, something about like that actually, which this reminds me a lot of Lureworks Flow Lime, which uh, which is a super cool color. Yeah. In fact, hmm, yeah, you know what, we're gonna start with that and, and do a test run. Um, yep, but I need my black flake here, so pretty much the, the same thing uh, applies. We just need some black flake in either side. So I'm gonna use my uh, square cut stuff here. All right. And hopefully this turns out. I didn't mix out as much plastic, so I don't have as much plastic to make boo-boos with. You know, if I, if I can't get what I want out of these uh, smaller cups, I have to start over again. All righty. But you know, th this is so much fun to me, trying to match a, a, a great color, especially from another small bait maker like myself, who, uh, you know, really, really can put some time into his color development. And, you know, that's always a, a tough case to crack. All right, so we're just gonna start with one grass grenade. And uh, sorry, I got this sunlight coming in here. I don't, I don't like it when my light gets, gets uh, messed with, so to speak. But hopefully these come out good. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. Ooh, I tell you, it looks good right there. So uh, I'll try and zoom in on that real quick. So uh, let's see. Yeah, if I 
take a look there. Good contrast. One's not really overpowering the other. Um, so hopefully this looks good. All right, drum roll, please. Let's see if these came out. Ooh, looking good so far. Okay. Oh yeah. That might be it, you guys. That might be it. First try. So if we look here, eh, yeah, you can see the kind of brown watermelon side, and then that, then that uh, really bright kind of lime truce. Boy. I'm super happy with that. Yeah. Still still really good contrast on both sides. And the watermelon didn't overpower that side. Neither did the green. That's a winner. Alright, so I'm going to try to get this done before the sunlight uh, annoys me even more. So now we're going to... Eh. Do a run here of the punch crawls, okay? Ooh, man, that felt good. There's just something that feels good about a good injection when it just, I mean, yeah, look at that, right up the middle, all right? Now we're gonna do our 709 crawls, okay? Ah, oh, you know what? I shouldn't have put up my stinger molds because I think I'd have enough. I didn't think I was gonna have enough. So I put them away. You know what, I'm gonna go get one real quick. All right, let's see what these look like in some of the other molds here. Oh yeah, there it is in the 709. Oh, gorgeous, you guys. All right, so we're gonna run these other ones here. Out you go. Set those aside. Yeah, super, super cool. Awesome color ideas from uh, Middle River Baits here. Let's see. Let's see what these look like. I went ahead and uh, ran one more of these punch bug molds kind of off camera. Oh, super awesome. Yeah, I was really looking forward to seeing this. Look at that. Oh, man. Oh. It still just blows me away whenever you really get a, a good color coming out of the molds. You know, it that's the sensation that <clears throat> never gets old. You know, you never get tired of opening a mold and seeing something that is truly pleasing to your eye. It keeps you coming back out here doing more of this. All right. And last but not least, some more of the bugs. Oh yeah, super awesome, super awesome. All right, now we're gonna lay everything out and take a look. Okay, there it is everybody, looking sharp, looking good. So yeah, let's get a little closer. So I was really pleased to get this one pretty much spot on. This, the green one is a closer match to what I'm seeing in Middle River Bait's photo than the pink, and that's because um, I think I think the uh, the watermelon side, the green pumpkin side, I hit the nail on the head with that. I don't know if that's what he used, but this right here looks just like I wanted it to. This one, as you can tell, you know, I struggled a bit. Um, I still think that the <clears throat> uh, green pumpkin side was a little bit different on his, and I think he was using a different brand pink. Um, I only had one other option for pink, and this is the closest one that I wanted. You can add white to brighten up your pink, which I could have done, but I wanted to stick with that because I, I, I thought it worked really well, but I think his pink just might be a little bit brighter. But, you know, if, if somebody had asked me to color match those two colors, hey, I don't think they would complain uh, with, with this, so... Um, you know, that's what it's all about is, is trying, is trying new things. And, and I've probably made something like, like both of these before in the, in the past, but not quite with this level of uh, commitment. So, um, you know, seeing his post, um, was, was inspiring. You know, I'm inspired by everybody else, uh, 
you know, uh, e equally. So, um, yeah, super cool colors and uh, a, a really fun challenge. So, Austin, hope I did you proud. And, um, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Well, okay, everybody. Just, uh, yeah, can y'all hear those crickets? The E. Yeah. Starting to come out. It's a beautiful evening here in the neighborhood. So, just getting a little, uh, getting a little evening fresh air. So, yeah. It's really, really awesome color challenge. Um, so, again, thank you, Austin, over at Middle River Baits. Definitely check him out. Doing some awesome stuff. As are a lot of bait makers. Uh, you know, um, one of my good friends, Brad Hardy, over at Oracle Lures. Definitely check him out. Oracle Lures, like the Oracle from the Matrix. Uh, let's see, uh, Jimmy over at Habitual Anglers, um, doing incredible stuff with, with molding and sculpting his own stuff. Um, yeah, there's just so many, I can't even think of them all. Um, so, anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, color matching is definitely a challenge, um, even when you've been doing it forever. Um, you know, a really, really awesome colors like that, that another small bait maker really spent time on. You know, those, those are hard to get, you know, it's, it's not watermelon red up there, you know, at the, at the tackle store. So, um, with that said, we're going to sign this one off. So again, like I said earlier, hope you guys enjoyed. Please shoot me lots of comments down below. Let me know if you like the green one or the pink one better. And, uh, and let me know which one you thought I got closest. So, um, I say the, the green one definitely turned out better than the pink, but both super cool. So I'm going to go enjoy the rest of my evening and, uh, We'll catch you guys next time.